Hey guys, today I'm going to show you watercolor technique demo um, that you can complete in your sketchbook. The materials you will need, pan watercolor, plastic wrap, tissue paper, about two to three watercolor pencils, um, two to three water soluble oil pastels, and two to three markers, salt, and stencils. In your sketchbook on a double spread, we are going to try out all of these different techniques. You're going to, need to divide your pages up into 13 sections. Each one of these sections will go over different techniques. The first section that we are going to use is, is the, we're going to need the two to three water soluble oil pastels. Um, I cannot stress enough how much I love these crayons. They are so pigmented and beautiful. Um, students seem to love them. They, um, you will see that I, you can paint right on them and they paint beautifully. Um, you can quickly blend if you don't want an outline at all. Um, the next thing that we're going to be doing is just showing you how you can dip in using this um, water soluble oil pastel and you don't want to do this if you want a nice crisp edge. It kind of blurs out the edge just a little bit. The next one that I'm going to show you, I learned, discovered last year for the first time, but you can actually take markers, now not Sharpie markers, but water soluble markers, and you can paint with them. So you can just apply a section, add some of the uh, marks that you want, and then take your paintbrush and you can blend. It's quite amazing. Um, and it won't be too splotchy either when you do it. The next one is a multi-tonal wash. This is great for large backgrounds. Um, you need to put down water first on here, but you can see how you can create this awesome gradient. The, the next one, multi-tonal wash. So we can blur together two colors from top to bottom, and watercolor is beautiful for blending like that. But again, uh, background needs to be wet when you're doing this. The next one is pen and ink. Now, I have to only apply some dabs and blots of, of paint on here, and then I'm going to let it dry. That's the key. So I'm only going to do a little bit, and then I'm going to move on to my next one. The next one is stencils. Now, I don't have a lot of stencils for us to use, but if you have stencils or anything like that, you could always use them on a project. Um, but I want to show you how, if you have them, don't use a lot of water. I'm going to let you try out the ones that I have. So this is, needs a lot of paint on there, but you could actually use stencils. This is great. I've seen people use them if they have like patterns for stencils. It's beautiful. The next one is transparency. Um, on this one, again, it's just like the pen one. I'm going to have to come back to this. So I'm going to just paint a few strokes in one color, and then I'm going to allow that to dry, and then we'll come back to that in a second. The next one is lifting. So there's some other materials you can use this, but my favorite is if you lift using plastic wrap. So you're going to need to apply a lot of watercolor, and it needs to be wet into this area. Then you're going to take it just a little bit. I have too much here, but just a little bit of plastic wrap and just allow it to dry. So again, that's another area we have to allow to dry. The next one is tissue paper. Oh my gosh, my elementary school kids love this. So you're, we're just going to put down some, we're going to wet it first, then you're just going to dab with the brush on top, um, so make sure it's good and saturated, and then let it dry. Okay, let's see. The next one that we're going to do um, is salt Oh my gosh, this is the crowd favorite, always. Wet down your area first. Now, you can use some of that wash technique where you start applying one um, color on one side and another color on the other side. Have fun with it, let it blend. Now we're going to take uh, just regular iodide salt and then we can sprinkle it on here. You'll notice that the salt will actually absorb the paint and it will um, hold it close to it. So what it happens when it dries is it's going to actually um, create an awesome texture. 
The next one that I'm doing right here is I'm adding oil pastel. So this is regular oil pastel. So oil and water don't mix. So they are going to resist. So I put down white oil pastel and now I'm painting on top of it. And the area of this oil pastel is actually going to resist all of the paint. So it actually leaves all these beautiful lines that look like the paper lines. The next is stippling. So I don't love this unless you control it so that we are just going to be adding that splatter. This is awesome for like night back sky or you're making stars or you're making texture in water. Really cool. Now I'm going to go back in because I've allowed these other areas to dry now for the transparency. So you can see when I add paint on top, the blue on top, you can see that watercolor is transparent. This is really important. You are going to see what happens underneath. So you need to plan carefully. Now I'm going to come back in after mine has um, dried somewhat and I love to use um, pen and ink over on top of watercolor. Watercolor is beautiful and soft and pen and ink is sharp and crisp and those two contrasting each other I'll, um, allow us to make some really beautiful drawings. Now I almost forgot, so I'm going to add in one more because I almost forgot my other second favorite thing is watercolor pencils pencils they work really well so I'm using these pencils just like I would a regular pencil where I'm going to be applying firm pressure at the top gradually decreasing my pressure so I can create really light gra graduated tone and I'm going to do the different color on the bottom so you can see how this is going to transition just like you did the wash but except if you really want something that's really really precise you are going to love this because you can stay really really precise like using a pencil but when you grab the water and you're going to paint on top of this, it is actually going to turn liquefy and it's going to turn into paint. So it's going to, it has all the control of a pencil, but then all the beauty of watercolor when you add water to it. I hope you guys have enjoyed playing around with maybe a technique that you've known about or maybe a technique that you haven't known about.